I'm out here in the chicken yard today bringing some fresh compost to our hens. There's a huge windfall at the place where we collect from, so I'll talk about that in a moment. And I thought it'd be fun to give an update. Last time I was in here talking about things, I was sharing the idea around uh, transitioning over to using rocks around trees and shrubs that we care about as a way to protect from hens. That's been working well, and I wanna talk about that and then show you Leaf Bag Mountain over here. It's been a fun fall project, so stick around. The first thing, which is kind of a minor update, minor upgrade, but one that I feel really nice about and one that I wanna keep uh, moving towards, each of these little shrubs and trees, I talked about this in the last video in the chicken yard, um, they had a little metal ring around them. In fact, now there's a pile of those rings. I'm trying to find some other uses for them. And I wanted to have a little less metal in this space, more access for the chickens to move around, and the aesthetic and functionality of having rocks around these felt very appropriate. And so I wanted to experiment with it, went ahead and did so. Been picking rocks out of our neighbor's field, cleaning them uh, from around the pond that we dug in our neighbor's backyard. There's rocks to be had in lots of places. And so far, with a nice layer of rocks around, so for example, here is a male seaberry, that's a more established black currant. The chickens certainly have taken interest in between all the gaps in them, but they haven't moved the rocks at all, if, if maybe a tiny bit here or there, but they certainly haven't disturbed any soil. Wherever there's gaps between the rocks, they're working the soil up like crazy. So I really like this direction. It's something I can always adjust and move later on, but finding rocks is definitely cheaper than finding metal fencing. And aesthetically, functionality-wise, I feel a lot better about it. So that's a real win. A lot of the rings that were surrounding those trees have now been redeployed to be compost rings. They're going to be boundary containers to keep material. So the uh, winter run will be coming online soon enough. And if we have some rings here, some rings there, we can fill them with layers of leaves, compost, food scraps, leaves, compost. So it's going to be a nice hot compost bin that will be able to completely load up with earthworms that will then inoculate the food scraps as they enter this space. The nice thing with the two by four welded wire as well is that it's open enough that chickens can get their faces in through there and can pick out sprouts and seeds. It's like a vending machine of fertility. They can pick through, it can drop on the ground, I can put it back on top, pick through. And so then these can also be pulled off periodically if I want a huge pile of pill bugs and earthworms available to our chickens all at once. I think I'm formally, finally done collecting leaf bags this fall. Uh, kind of went a little big on it this year. Took breaks in between shipping to go get truckload after truckload. Probably got around eight to 10 truckloads with 30 to 40 bags per truckload. Figured out an efficient system for packing them just at the tail end. That's the way that always works. And so what you're looking at in front of me probably represents around 150 to 200 leaf bags worth of material. Everything in the center here is loose. Uh, in other words, I've dumped them out of the leaf bags. Those have been sent up to the main six acre nursery where they've already been laid out to sheet mulch future garden space, which is really functional, a really great use for those bags. And now we've got the system here that's a way to cache all this material. We had an incredibly windy, windy day. Some of the leaves blew around, but not a lot. So I feel like the system will only get more stable from here once there's a little more rain and snow and the leaves are patted down by the chicken's activity. This is a way to cache massive amounts of free carbon and mineral on the boundary of our chicken yard. It's a little unsightly, maybe. I like the look of it. I went through it first and I dug out some of the soil that was in this area. It was nice, rich, uh, finished compost so I could send it out to other gardens before we buried in here. And we had these black pots, these large nursery pots that I found from a nursery business going out, out of business and set them up as the initial boundary. I was trying to rack my brain on a way to hold all this leaf material. And originally I thought I would fence it in. Then I thought, oh, I could use these uh, containers. So I filled them with layers of soil and leaves, made sure that there were some earthworms in there, some red wigglers, and so they can inoculate the pile. If I were to do this from scratch again, though, I think I would just start with the leaf bags and lay them up in this brick style. Uh, they're leaning in towards the pile, so they're not going to fall outward. And I could theoretically just keep going up and up and up. As we use the leaves in the middle, 
for bedding in the chicken coop or for the composting system, we can dump more and more of these bags into here. Um, so you can see this side has two layers. And so far it's done a nice job of keeping the leaves from completely burying the gooseberry and the goji and some of the plantings along the fence line here. So using the leaf bags themselves to contain the loose leaves in the middle, very happy with it. A couple of cords of leaves in here. I don't know what the actual dimensions are, but it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of volume, probably about four or five feet deep right in the middle there. And as I dumped out each bag, I looked, you know, was there a cigarette butt? Was there a fleck of trash? Very little overall, uh, but I picked that out for sure before I left it in here. And now the chickens come through and they play periodically and it's already starting to warm up. Some of the leaf bags have been dumped in our common walkways and we'll reserve more and more of them for this. It's a nice way to keep the chickens' feet from being in cold mud. It was snowy and frozen the other day and so this makes it a little bit more comfortable for them. Insulates the ground and makes even more space for earthworms to inoculate. So it's a nice aesthetic. It's basically doing the exact opposite of what most folks do with their suburban yards and bury areas in leaves rather than remove them. You can see some pipelines in here where we've got compost that's finishing. I actually did go through and rake the leaves off and sent them further down so that this material is a little bit more uniform, uh, a little bit more mellowed and ready to go. Tomorrow I'll bring that up to the main nursery. There's probably a truckload or two of compost in there that needs to go. So now we're bringing in the bounty of the compost, the raw food scraps today. And this is where the leaf bags really come into high functionality for us. We clear out this initial bay, we move it into the next part of the system, and then initially put down some fresh dry leaves. I really like leaves that are shredded. So the bags that have shredded leaves we set aside right next to this. Just makes for an easier texture. It makes it easier for the hay fork to move through the material. I've found too that before I start adding food scraps, it's really in my best interest to take some compost that's nearly finished, or I should say at least a lot more evolved. This is probably two week old, three week old material, and send some of it back right before the food scraps get dumped. And that inoculates it with soil life, bacteria, and some earthworms. The chickens can eat the fresh material, and then as it gets folded and tumbled into the next pile, it's integrating with all the soil life, the carbon layers, and the like. So, ooh. And so when it goes from this first bay and gets put into the second bay, it already is moving along quite a bit. The chickens have pecked through most of the material they wanted, but now there's a nice layering of leaves and earthworms, pill bugs, and good soil life. We can start adding silk grain into this bay. One of their absolute top tier treats are cooked noodles. I think to them it's like they're eating tons and tons of worms. This, this dump in particular is pretty spectacular. It's noodles, it's hard boiled eggs, there's meat, there's beans, and there's cheese, and some rice. And then all you can eat salad. <laughs> it's a good day for our friendly hens. This system for storing leaf bags Seems fine enough. When we had an incredibly heavy wind, it blew the tarp off a bit. Um, not really going for the gold as far as design and aesthetics here. It's basically want to use what's laying around. And the reason we're keeping these in the bags is that the intent, these are dry enough when we collected them that we can then bring them into the coop as we need them. This will be for the deep litter method bedding in the coop throughout the winter if it works out. Chickens are starting to lay in a serious way up in there, so as we collect from the coop, we just make sure to come out here and collect. And interestingly, the eggs in this context are even cleaner than the ones in our nesting boxes. I think they wipe their feet a lot on their way up <laughs> to go lay. If you still have an opportunity to collect leaf bags where you are, maybe this is some food for thought as a method. I think this is pretty darn scalable. It could be wider, it could be taller, it could be shorter. It could be all sorts of different dimensions. It certainly doesn't need to have the plastic at the bottom. And I think if you had, if I had laid these up initially on their side and stacked them like firewood where each course goes a little bit in towards the center, this could go up theoretically quite a bit higher. I don't need to be that crazy. I think a few hundred leaf bags is more than enough. 
We've dumped two truckloads over in our neighbor's field. We dumped some in our neighbor's yard. We've got that whole pile. Enough's enough, Sean. Let's get on to some other projects. We're hoping by sharing notes about our system here that more and more folks are getting inspired to integrate this sort of idea with their chickens. And I want to remind folks, if you're just getting into this or if you're thinking about getting into it but you're not quite sure, it really is important to be very clear. Nothing about what we're doing is critical that you have to do all the steps or you have to do it the way we're doing it in order for it to work. If you have a wholly other system that works pretty well for you but you'd like to add a little bit of food scraps, just try it. Use your intuition, use your judgment and observation and figure out a system that works for you. It doesn't have to be wholesale, it doesn't have to be, you know, you scrap all their feeding regime that you use now and commit 100% to food scraps. You can do it a little at a time, see how it works for you and make adjustments as you go. We'll let them work on this for another little while, maybe half hour or an hour or so, and then chip away at getting the rest of the compost off the truck. There's another four times this material. We really lucked out. Wherever you are, as we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving time, it feels like the amount of food waste seems to go up and up. So maybe there are local restaurants or food distribution hubs. Are there food pantries where there's leftover material that is not safe for humans or it's a little spent that you might be able to tap into? Are there farms that are finishing up harvests that maybe you can go and pull the rest of the cabbages from the field? So many different ways to explore this. I hope you're figuring out ways that work well for you. But for now, we'll do a little chicken TV. Thanks for watching.